2 and what? 2 and 7? 16. 2 and 16. Read again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Let no man judge you and whether or not you eat pork chops or, or shrimp, uh, which was forbidden by the law. Uh -huh. Or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath day. All right. Now that's very clear. The seven day Adventists. I hope y'all caught hold of that. It's in the same Bible that you read if you got a King James Bible. All right. Where are we at? Question 10? Yes. No apostle could have been an Adventist give two reasons using doctrine. All right. Hold on. Well, well, that's that's probably true, but uh, wait a minute now. No apostle could have been invented because, give two reasons. Uh, well, they were monotheistic. That's true. They preached what? Now, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't catch, I wouldn't use that one. Uh, who got something else? All right. I have First Corinthians 11. Chapter one, verses one and two, saying, "Follow me, as I follow Christ, please follow me, as I follow Christ." No apostle could have been invented because give give two reasons. Uh, can we get deeper than that? All right, Evans Jones, you got your hand halfway up. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's good. Uh, the Godhead, one God, yes, I, I accept that. But come on. All right. Somebody got something else. Uh, all right, uh, brother. Uh, the Adventists don't even follow the proper dietary plan of, of the Apostles. All right, good. Evangelist, Roger. Now, the apostles baptized in Jesus' name. That's what Adventists I'm didn't. Amen. They baptized right. in the Trinity. That's right. That's right. Adventists believe in Trinity, and the apostles believed in Jesus only. Right. One God. That's right. Okay. Amen. Right. Exactly. You, you, yeah. Oh, yes. I was, I was, uh, I was trying to use scripture of Galatians uh, 5 and 4. Uh -huh. uh, Galatians 5 and 4. Because it tried to use the law to save people to save well, but but uh, it depends on how, how you how you go into that contest. Jesus said, "I come not to condemn the law or destroy the law, but to fulfill." There are segments of the law that we still follow in the grace dispensation. Uh, fornication came from under the law; it's still a sin. Stealing came from under the law; still a sin. Murder came from under the law; still a sin. Uh, but the punishment can be deferred, but it's still the same sin. Grace simply gives a person a chance to repent from the sin, but it's still the same sin. Everyone understand? All right. Question 11. What is the English word for God? I wonder how many are going to get that one right. All right. Well, he said, you said Jesus? All right. Dr. Chris? Lord. No. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, the English word for God is God. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> How many did I catch? Raise your hand. Tell the truth now. How many did I catch? My goodness, I caught, I caught a couple of preachers here. <laughs> Man. English word for God is God. My goodness. <laughs> all right. 
All right, question 12. Mm. Hebrew scholars teach the most used word for God in the Torah was Yeshua, Elohim, or Almighty. Now, this uh, is a reflection on what I've taught several times way in the past, but I want to see if you remember it. Uh, all right. All right. El Gautin say Elohim. Who agree? Who disagree? Elohim was the most used word in the Torah or the Old Testament for for God. All right. Now we get into the tough one. The majority of context Hebrew scholars hold that the proper noun for God is Jesus, Almighty, or Jehovah. All right. Uh, I believe it's Jehovah, sir. Who put other than Jehovah? Everybody else agree with Jehovah. Some of y'all ain't raise your hand at all. <laughs> all right, daughter, what'd you, what'd you put down? Did you have your hand up? I, did you have your hand up? Oh, oh, all right. Would you put Evangelist Evans? Jehovah. Uh, uh, Jehovah. Amen. Is a, a proper noun for for God. Amen. Twenty points. Who gonna get it? Oh, question fourteen. Question oh, fourteen. Oh, okay. The single word in Greek for Jehovah, with the title Savior, is. The singular word in Greek for Jehovah with the title Savior is. All right. What, you got your hand up? What did you put? Yes, sure. What did you put? What did you put? All right. Come, come on, y'all. All right, Elder Ricky, what you put? I put Jesus. Evangelist, you said now would you put? Jesus. Huh? Jesus. Evangelist Jones? The singular word in Greek for Jehovah with the title Savior is Jesus. Amen. Remember where I said Greek? Amen. That's why I said read it carefully. <laughs> I didn't catch nobody, did I? Not too many. All right, tough one. 20 points. Melchizedek was Jesus, an angel using Hebrew chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Who, who, who have not called on? <laughs> Evangelist Brooks, you got to stand up here. What did you put down? Uh, daughter Brooks, stand up. What did you put for your answer? You didn't put no answer. All right. Any of you down people want to answer? Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Evangelist Brennan, what did you put? Praise the Lord, I didn't answer that. You didn't answer? Evangelist <laughs> Jackie? I put Jesus. Let's everybody turn to Hebrews uh, 7. What'd you put, Elder Lansing? Uh, uh, Evangelist Coleman, you put. Uh, you put Jesus. You put Jesus. What'd you put? I put Jesus. Did all y'all put Jesus? I did. All right. <laughs> so, let's start at verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, preached the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by, by interpretation king of righteousness. Who's king of righteousness? Jesus. Jesus. And after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Who's the king of peace? All Jesus. prince of peace. All right. Without father, without mother, without descent, 
having neither beginning of days nor end of life. So obviously there couldn't have been no angel, could it? Amen.